I imagine at one time you were this brilliant little child. As we enter into adulthood, what was brilliant in childhood can actually get in the way of you living the life you want to live. Hello friends, I'm Nancy Houston. I want to help you live a better life. We're all emotional creatures who sometimes think. And so it's so important that we make this journey from our heads into the depths of our hearts. Welcome to The In-Between with Nancy Houston. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nancy Houston podcast. Obviously, I'm not Nancy Houston. I am not a blonde woman who is an expert in all things sex, trauma, and all the other things that she has done in her life. She is a freak of nature, the genius herself. I'm just the producer here to make this happen. And today is what we call a solo pod. This is where the producer is going to feed her questions and we just get to go off of what she's thinking in here and what she feels in here. And it's going to be a good time. So everybody, please, in the chat, in the comments, give it up for the young, the <laughs> powerful, the expert, Nancy Houston. Oh, Hector. Was that pretty good? Uh, that, not Hector, bad? Hector, you know, a little exaggerated, but not bad. <laughs> you know, the young part, I, you know, but that's okay. <laughs> you have great skin. Do you know that? Oh. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. You have you you have Mexican skin oh, like me. Ooh. So like my parents, they look good. They look good. They look good, and I'm gonna look good for a long time. I, you, I mean, honest. Sometimes us white folks, you know, uh, but, but I I like look at black women and Hispanic perfect women, skin, and I'm like, kind of not fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I want to get into something that you've said yeah. has been burning in your heart has yeah. been, um young men who struggle with depression. And really, I mean, the root of all that is just living in loneliness too. Mm. So when you think of the young man in today's age, what is what is the common struggle and pattern you've seen when you are meeting with them or things you can see from afar in the way they go about their life? Yeah, well, Hector, you know, glad you're asking me about this because Male depression has just been like burning in my heart. Um, if it feels, I can feel the ache, and I think I can feel the ache because, like, I watched my father and my brother both struggle with what now I know was most likely pretty severe male depression, mm -hmm. but we had no terms for it. We had no we didn't talk about male depression. Right. Like we live in a world where we believe that, well, females have twice the amount of male depression. Right. And as a therapist, I've believed that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I do anymore. Mm. I just think that male depression is underreported and untreated and that men have been socialized to suck it up, to get over it to figure it out on their own, mm. to struggle by themselves. And then they have fathers that that's what mm. they've modeled for them. And, you know, we might see, like, my dad would drink a lot or party hard. or But I think underneath the hollowness mm. was depression, untreated depression. And then my brother, I watched my brother grow up. He drank too much. Mm-hmm. He used too much cocaine. He did a lot of sexual acting out. Very, very similar to what my father had done. And these are all escapes. Oh. All escapes. They're, a, they're an attempt, I believe, to try to fill up the emptiness and the hollowness and the internal pain that they have no voice for. So when, when, I, when I see the men, yeah. a lot of times when they're not advocates for being vulnerable and being honest about their struggle, which is most, um, a lot of times they will refer back to things along the line of, I'm molded in the dark. I am strengthened when I'm alone. Like I have to be, this is what, who made, this is what made me so strong. Yeah. This is what made me a good man that is resilient and I don't give up. And yeah. Is there is there like a weird sense that that came from way back when? Because back then we had to do that. Like, 
We had to kill for animals. We had to hunt. We had to build tribes. And now we don't have to do that. You can talk about how you feel and you can talk about your struggles without thinking you're the only guy that is out here in the world. Yeah. I think, you know, when you think about male role models, like even if you think about James Bond, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) He's, he's, He's on his own. He represents masculinity. He represents how masculinity is supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. When he actually does get vulnerable enough to fall in love, besides just having sexual conquests, but when he actually does fall in love, then he pays for it. Mm. Because he gets married, they drive off on their honeymoon, and she is shot and killed. Mm. And so the message to men is, don't be that vulnerable. Don't let don't let a woman get that close to you, because mm. you might lose her. Mm. You know, and so vulnerability is filled with loss for men. Yeah, and and like we need a different picture, right? Of what masculinity really is. Mm. So when you think of, I'm thinking of like a friend of mine. Yeah, and. The, let's say this person, they live in you know Western America. Mm-hmm. They have great content at the disposal of their hand. You know they can look up motivational speech, how to get out of depression. Yeah. Like there's so much resources online. They have yeah. that. Yes. They have good friends. Yeah. But they had a rough childhood. Yeah. Have you noticed that even though some people can have all the resources and the right people around them, they won't choose to do the right thing and work through a lot of that and just stick to the pain that the childhood brought and that's why they stay stuck i think they can think oh well that's weak or i should what's wrong with me i should be over that Mm. or let me go run another marathon and i'll dull the pain let me go look at more porn and i will soothe the emptiness inside of me um, but or yeah, or I'll listen to some motivational talk mm-hmm. on how to overcome depression. And you know, I'm not I'm I'm not opposed to a positive motivational talk that will help you feel better. The problem is if there is pain in the depths of the soul and it has not been addressed, then eventually that will catch up with you over and over and over and over and over again and all the things we do all the let's make more money let's have more success let's conquer another heel those things are all great but they will not feel Mm. that lonely scared terrified little boy inside of them Mm. and so if i'm sitting with like your friend right Mm -hmm. and i'm just gonna say hey buddy Tell me about your childhood. And I know we therapists can feel like we can just keep going back there and back there and back there. But there's a reason for it. Yeah. There is a reason for it. Mm-hmm. If if a child did not get the attachment they need in childhood, then in all truthfulness, they don't know how to re- reach out and get the true attachments they need now. So let's say let's say you're on the other end of the stick of yeah. uh, of the friendship, um, because if there's one depressed guy out there, that means there might he might have a friend that's not depressed and yeah. struggle with what he's struggling with. Yeah. Or female, don't matter. Yeah. Let's say you're on the other end of the stick and you're more positive, you're more optimistic, and you don't necessarily struggle with a lot of depression. Yeah. But your friend does, and your friend isn't unmotivated. Your friend doesn't want help. Your friend doesn't desire yeah. talking about it, doesn't want unsolicited advice. So when you're that friend, because I know for me, I felt like I've been put in a box because you don't want help. Mm-hmm. What is that person supposed to do? Are we supposed to pursue them slowly and just show that we love them, or do we pry? What do we do in that situation? Mm-hmm. Well, you're asking a really great great question because we can't want 
for others what they don't want for themselves. Mm. Um, nonetheless, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't mind getting out the crowbar a little bit to see if I might be able to pop the lid off and go there, but but respectfully. Right. If they're like, no, I'm not going there. It's like, okay, okay. And have you considered how your relationship with your kid now isn't working mm. because the relationship with your dad never worked and you haven't done your recovery work. Mm. You know, we transmit to the next generation what we ourselves haven't faced. So I would just, I, honestly, I call this relational bravery. Mm. I think it takes a boatload of courage for all of us mm -hmm. to face our histories, mm. for all of us to be willing to go, you know, the fruit of my life right now is depression and I'm not motivated. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to interact with my wife, kids, friends. Yeah. I'd rather not do any of that. It all takes way too much energy. And like, I get that. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, hey, you're probably struggling with male depression. Yeah. And the cool thing that the, I, I don't, I don't want to say it like that. The good news about depression is 80% of it is very treatable. And so, you know, there are medications, there are, which, you know, I, I think medications have their place. Mm -hmm. It's not my first go-to move, but if somebody's really struggling with depression and has been for a long time, and the depression feels like it's here, and you don't even want to get out of bed. Yep. Then sometimes medication's really necessary. Yeah. You know, and but then you've got to take the next step and like start getting some help. There's no shame in asking for help. Well, you know, it's funny that you have felt led to reach this demographic, yeah. and you've been feeling the that burning hole in your heart for the young man who is struggling with depression. Yeah. And it's hilarious because I'm your producer. Mm -hmm. And since we've met, mm -hmm. I've been very honest, like that is my struggle. Mm -hmm. My struggle has always been uh, uh, depression and suicidal ideation since I was 12, yeah. right? And yeah. I know for some men, at least speaking for myself, I'm sure there's people who can relate, uh -huh. is you get to a point where gets old yeah. and you believe, I think this is actually a part of my identity mm -hmm. because I've talked about it. Yeah. I went to therapy. Yeah. I went to that church service. Yeah. I did whatever and yeah. it won't freaking leave. Yeah. So that's I, good, Hector. I know there's just some guys who feel. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. I, I want to pause here. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got a great point. Sometimes people can say, well, I've done all the things and I'm still freaking depressed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know what? You're right. And that's fair. So I don't want to be like, OK, do this, this, this and this. I, I really don't want to do that to people. I want to encourage you and anybody else like, hey, start taking that little boy inside of you on your lap. Mm hmm. And start saying to him, hey, Betty, you know what? I've tried to ignore you. I have tried to shove you down. I have tried to silence you. And that's the one thing that's going to shift. Right. Today. I'm going to start recognizing you. I'm going to try to make friends with you. And I'm going to let you tell me your stories. That's good. At least, I think, because I... I think people can go to therapy and never make friends with themselves. Mm -hmm. And so even if you go and do all the work and you're still like, I'm still struggling with depression, mm -hmm. it's probably because you've never made friends with your internal world. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that because w when you go to therapy, like if you're like me, you got you got shamed and guilted into it. Uh, so you're there for someone else, 
right? So you already got a wall up. Yeah. This is probably most dudes. That's true. A lot of men get drug into therapy. They get drug into it, right? So yeah. what you're saying, it, it helps give verbiage for yeah. what guys can do yeah. because you go into therapy. If you already have a wall up, you know, you're already annoyed that wife, the wife or the girlfriend or your friend told you, you need to go and you need to work on this, right? You already yeah. have, you're already frustrated with them. Yeah. And then now you're just pissed at yeah. the the problem. I the hate my thing. hate my depression. I yeah. hate this. I'm never gonna change. It's always gonna be this way. Yeah. But what's funny what you're saying, it helps me, and I don't know if this is the right way to look at it, but it helps me understand the it helps me romantic romanticize what is really the root of it? Mm. Well, why are you depressed? Yeah. A lot of times you dig deep and you figure out it it can be a simple thing. It's like, yeah. I feel like I let people down all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's switch it. You really care about people. Mm. You love people. You just switch the narrative. You've been mean to that kid, mm -hmm. right? That thing. Yeah. It's like, hey, you need to look at it this way. Yeah. This is where you can learn you self positive uh some, self love self some worth damn compassion some compassion and for grace yourself right right and, which and, we can so lack oh my god we're the worst we're so abusive to ourselves oh we're so self abusive so i love what you're saying so yeah it's and that that is something again easier said than done i've been walking through the the whole the whole journey of figuring out why am i depressed mm -hmm. and now i'm now in a place of understanding who i am mm -hmm. cuz you talk to these guys and you talk to these young men and they don't have a damn clue who they yeah. are they don't know who they are everything is tied to someone yeah. or something yeah. and it's like well who are you yes well we've so been taught to live life from the outside in you know like if, if I can get like that woman to validate me or that person or have some success somewhere, then I'm going to feel validated and then the inside of me will calm down. And I'm like, it doesn't work. Right. We, we have to flip it. Mm -hmm. And like you just said, you, you flip the narrative. You've been telling yourself one story and then the day where you started going, no, wait a minute. Does this 12-year-old really deserve to die? <laughs> it helps you love yourself. It does. I'm, and I'm, look, this is the perfect day for this convo because mm -hmm. this isn't just Nancy talking about it. I'm a young dude. I'm 26. Yeah. I've struggled, still do, ongoing depression since I was 12. I've, I've attempted to take my life twice. Mm -hmm. And I am just now figuring out 12 plus years in, yeah. I think I had to flip the script the script yeah for some people they just need a medicine and boom they got off of it in two years and they love themselves again right like very, very few very I think few it, yeah i think it really takes a combo it's yeah. a case by case thing yeah. it's it's i think we need to see like our our mental health as a pie mm. i mean i know that's really silly but and okay what are the different slices of this pie what needs to happen for me to have a whole pie Mm. Does that make sense? Right. And so one slice might be medication. One slice might be therapy. But one slice may be, it, it, I can go to therapy every day, all day. But if I'm still going to have all this self-loathing mm -hmm. and talk to myself in such an abusive way, I'm I'm not going to get to where I want to go. You're right. I, it's, a, it's a lot of things. Yeah, it, it it's is. a lot of things. Isn't it? And that's what it's, it's been for me. I've wanted the most men who decide to slightly go down the journey of working through it. They kind of want a one quick fix. Oh, for sure. We, and you know what I've said to people so many times? Listen, if I had a magic wand, I would happily wave it over you. It's not that I'm unwilling, mm. you know, to give you some sort of simple solution. I've just never found it to be simple. Right. I think we have to give more, way more attention to the well-being of our mental health and know that there is no magic wand. Mm. It was a journey into this depression. It's going to be a journey out. And there needs to be some love and care in the process. And if you can love you, not 
I'm not talking about narcissism because narcissism really doesn't love the self. Mm-hmm. Narcissism is in love with the image of the self, but it actually has some self-loathing towards the true self. True, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And so it's this healthy, I have worth. One of the things I hate is how men actually have to fight for their masculinity. Mm. I remember when my little brother was about three and my dad said, well, I'm going to make a man out of him. And I'm like, I mean, like I was like five or six and I'm thinking, but wait a minute. He was born a man. Mm. God made him a man child mm. and nothing can ever change that. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it's who he is, but yet man, men have to fight and prove their masculinity. And I'm like, you shouldn't have to do that. It's God given. Yeah. I wonder if that would even help with some of the male depression. Like you are not, I mean, maybe I'm not even using the right language, but y- you shouldn't have to fight for your masculinity. It should be accepted. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're, artistic or poetic or you love you know boxing and bloody sports it shouldn't matter that it's an inherent part of who you are as God's creation right it's like a done Mm -hmm. deal your masculinity is settled it's not based on how much money you make how big your muscles are how it's it's none of those stupid things we've made it some of the stupidest things yeah you know and A lot of times, if you talk to someone about why they're depressed, uh, of course, there's a lot of people who have terrible childhood trauma that they haven't uncovered and all that. But a lot of times, they don't have enough money. um, Or in their head, they believe they don't have enough money. And uh, they are not good enough. Yeah, they've gone through some real failures. So I, I look at a lot of their depression, and most of the time for dudes, it's always tied to shame and guilt, totally, and feelings of self uh, of uh, unworthiness. Yes, yes, or, uh, or worthlessness. Yes, you're not like you're not good enough to call yourself a man. It's like, wait a minute. I think we have to flip that narrative. Mm-hmm. I hate when I hear this uh, real pet peeve of mine. <laughs> When I hear men, like at a men's conference, say to the men, man up. It's time for you to man up. I'm like, stop it. He is a man. And he may have just gone through a divorce. He may have just lost his job. He may be struggling to pay his bills. That None of that makes him any less of a man. And they can't step into... That masculinity, that God-given masculinity, if they don't address those things and work through those things. Well, I think we need to see it the other way around. Mm. There's nothing for you to step into. You already are. You are that. You are. You are. So stop trying to think you have to earn it. Mm. Right? Just just learn to be. Mm-hmm. I wonder if... if Men could just step into, this is who God says you are. Mm -hmm. So it is. This is your God-given identity. Right. And you are secure in it. Now, if you want to go run a marathon or build a great business or whatever you want to do, that's, that's great. But you don't have to do it to earn your identity as a man. That has been solidified, mm. and you should not have to fight for that. So where where does that come from, the hunger to prove? Is that a God-given thing? Is that a parent-taught thing? Why is it that we always feel like we aren't good enough and we have to step into something uh, to make someone else proud of them? Isn't that like... I, I think there's lots of different forces there. I think one of them is, I think God said, you are a man made my in, in the image and likeness of God, and this is who you are. So I, I think God's one who actually hands us 
your identity for me as a female. It's like, mm. Nancy, you are made a, a woman in the image and likeness of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I think there, you know, the garden was sort of a dangerous place. We like to think of it as paradise. And yes, there's paradise and there was danger. There's an enemy already lurking mm. and ready to shame and attack the identity of the man and the woman mm. by saying to them, you're not enough. Mm. Would you like to be enough? Then you eat from the tree because wow. you're not enough. You're inadequate. You're mm. missing out. You can't just take what God has said, who you are, and base your life on that. I mean, the life starts so early. So you, they're created. Yeah. And they know all things pure. Yeah. They are, pu they, they are pure and true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it takes someone coming in and planting, yeah. a planting thoughts into their belief system. Yeah. A snake. A snake. A snake. So we can identify it. Yeah. That person it's a, is yeah. a snake. That's a snake. And then we're, we live in worlds that say, I mean, how many movies have we all seen where daddy's died and everybody who walks by says to the little 10-year-old boy, well, now you're the... You're the man of this house. Mm. I'm like, he is not the man of this house. He's a little boy. Let the little boy be a little boy, please. Mm. How many how many times have we heard that little boys are told, suck it, suck it up, get over it, and don't talk about it? Mm. So it's such a young age, males are socialized to say, I don't want to talk about it. Right. Mm. I don't want to talk about my feelings. Mm. I don't want to talk about my anger, my sadness, my disappointment, my disgust, my hurt. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about it. Because they have been trained not to talk about it. Right. And, and that breaks my heart. So already they've had their identity threatened mm -hmm. by the snake. And then they're in these worlds where they're being told, you can't cry. Mm. You're a boy. Don't act like a, you know. And we've got these derogatory terms mm -hmm. we use for boys that cry. Mm. And it's like humiliating. And they learn their lesson. And then if that's not enough, then boys start doing that to each other. And then you know what else is even... Well, it saddens me. Because mm -hmm. we women have been trained by that too. And what I've seen sometimes, even working with couples, is he might come in with his walls up and hardened, and then he starts softening really softening mm. and then she starts saying well now wait a minute mm. whoa yeah you better man up mm. i wasn't bargaining for this versus embracing the softness and vulnerability yes and appreciating it now why would now question why would a female be afraid of that when a man wants to be soft and open. Because females have been trained in what a man is supposed to be as much as men have been. So we've got all these jacked up ideas of what a man is and what a woman is. <laughs> yeah. Y you know, we've just got a lot of jacked up ideas. Yeah. And so instead of being able to come together as we're meant to, because you and I sitting here, you represent the image of likeness of God, and I do as well. And so together, I, honestly, we, we have a more holistic picture, mm. right? right? Of humanity, mm -hmm. of God, right? right? And so, of course, there's going to, I mean, like the enemy put in animosity between male and yeah. female. 
And so then we start living in these false roles of what that was really meant to be like. Got it. And then if anybody breaks the rules, we're like, oh, now wait a second. I didn't sign up for that. Mm. You know? So everything, when when it comes to depression yeah. specifically, yeah. is it all tied to identity? Because under the umbrella of identity is what? Belief and everything else that has to do with you. So is that the main root? You know, I think it's, I think, um, I always like to let humans be complex. Mm. I don't like simplistic reductionism when it comes to humans. I know that a lot of our systems like to make it simple. I think it's, I think it's excessively complex. Mm. I think what, what some of it does go back to is attachment. Mm. Children are meant to be held and snuggled and feel safe and Got feel it. wanted. Got it. And feel warm and feel nurtured. Right. And, you know, there's different ways we even hold babies. Absolutely. And sometimes, you know, if a baby's being held like, ah, oh, you are such a gift. You know? Yeah. Look at you. Absolutely. I remember holding my babies and just crying. You know, I'm like, oh, my gosh, your preciousness mm -hmm. is beyond yep. my understanding. Right. But so many children don't get that. I have a friend. Um, a lot of people can. I know a lot of people can. A lot of people have this story, too. Yeah. And this is the type of person that their vo their story never gets told. No. They're a regular Joe Schmo that has a job. Yeah. And they go about their life. Yeah. And for them, it's normal. Uh, this friend in particular, his, fr uh, and I won't give any names yeah. for privacy, uh, his parents were almost not never in the picture. Mm. Mom left when he's two years old. Dad in and out of prison. Oh, His whole yeah. upbringing, childhood and teenage wow. life, right? Dad didn't get settled in back home till maybe he was an adult. Oh, wow. So what I noticed with my friend is hugs are weird. Yeah. Love yeah. it, lovey dovey is weird. Yeah, saying I love you, don't do that. That's weird. Yeah, everything's weird. Yes, that has to do with yeah. affection and love. Wow, and even though he grew up around me and my parents, very loving home, yeah, it's presented to him, he couldn't allow it all in, you know. What I always say to, well, to all of us, what I just want to say to all of us, without receptivity, there is no healing. Hmm. So sometimes gifts may be being offered to us later in life that could bring a, quite a bit of significant healing to us. Mm -hmm. But we refuse to be receptive. We refuse to take it in. And we feel more comfortable with our walls up. And I I don't know if anybody's listening and could get anything out of this today. It's like, please be willing to be receptive. Yeah. Just be receptive. And I know when you've been hurt a lot, that you can feel like, but these walls protect me. The problem with walls is they keep all the love out. Mm. You know, I know what kind of person you are and how loving you are and what kind of friend you are. If he could let your love in as his good friend, it could bring tremendous healing. Mm. I've been in groups of men where I've asked them, would, would you be willing 
to let this man put his arms around you and would you be willing to feel it? Mm. And man, I have just wept as I've watched grown men like be open enough to let another man put his arms around him and just hold him. And he sobs, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is like a magic moment mm -hmm. because he's letting in all the love he never got. Right. And he's been starving for love. Mm. You know, how many men are starving for love and they thought they could find it in pornography, mm. right? Because it, it, it can feel that way yeah. momentarily and then there can be a dopamine hit. And so it can feel loving. It can feel like it's going to fill these empty spots. And, and then it doesn't. And it's over. Yeah, and it's over. And then, you know, the dopamine just settles down and then the loneliness creeps back in. And, yeah. And I'm like, you know, we look for all these ways to have false intimacy fill us. Mm hmm Why really we're just starving for true intimacy. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about sex here because a lot of people have sex without any intimacy at all. Right. But I mean, intimacy can be just human to human connection. Sadly, we sexualize everything. We should stop that. You know, but we're just watching these men. And I'm like, this is such an incredible moment. And it's healing a part of that little boy who, who experienced so much neglect. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Right? The thing is, When there's been a lot of neglect in childhood, then more likely than not, you're going to find ways to neglect yourself and those you love. Got it. You know, because we just keep transmitting. Mm -hmm. And we can think, oh, I'm not going to do that. Right. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do, you know, I'm not going to do what my dad did. Mm. Um, and you probably won't. You'll probably make it look different. <laughs> but it'll be the same. Yeah. Absolutely. And until we're willing to do and admit, I've got I've got some soul work to do. Mm -hmm. And I've got to be willing to do it. You know? Yeah. So I've I've I love the work I do because I feel so privileged when I do watch there be healing and redemption. Mm -hmm. Not a couple of years ago I remember having a a daughter called me. She was now like an adult woman with a bunch of her own kids. But she's like, Nancy, would you help me and my mom and my brother? Because we don't talk to each other. Dad had long been out of the picture. But mom had basically abandoned the kids. Mm. You know? Got it. So I sat down with the three of them. And, and you know, kind of had to confront the mom on abandoning the kids. And She had that all worked in her head. How Well, I think it was better for him. You know, I left him with my mother, and I think she was better at it than I was. And I'm like, you know, your kids wanted you. Mm. And by the end of our, I think we kind of did an intensive, and by the end of a couple days, everybody in the room understood each other's stories and had softened, and walls had come down. I get a little, hmm choked up thinking about this because um and they reconciled mm. and like they could hold each other yeah. and then the daughter you know and then you know sometimes I just kind of lose track of folks like they got what they needed and then they go on right yeah and I think a couple months later the daughter called me and said man I'm so glad we did that and I'm like why I mean what's happened she goes well mom died mm. last night in her sleep but we were reconciled And I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's crazy. I'm so glad you did. Because, like, my brother died before my dad and my brother ever reconciled. Mm. Yeah. And there's nothing better than reconciling really hurtful relationships. Mm. You know? Yeah. But when, like, I love stories where a son can sit with his dad and say, Dad, you know, tell me your stories. What was it like for you growing up? 
And they learned that it was actually living a living hell for dad. Yeah. And then they can have some compassion. You know, I mean, it, it really doesn't do us much good to blame our parents. Yeah. It does us a lot of good to attempt to understand them and understand why dad did what he did or why mom did what she did. Because then we can kind of understand ourselves mm. and maybe understand better why I do what I do, you know, mm-hmm. right? Or why you do what you do. And, and then maybe we can have some reconciliation and some healing. And why is the... Well, why is the, 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 like the daughter or the son, a lot of times they'll have, you know, uh, a hatred towards their parent yeah. and yeah. Um, anger. Yeah. Why is the, why is it so important for them to be the leader in that moment and pursue reconciliation? Because their parents probably don't have the capacity to lead it. And when you think about it, you're doing it for your sake. You're doing it for the sake of your children, your children's mm. children. And you're doing it for the sake of even perhaps if they'll allow it, your parent. Mm. You know? And man, whenever we can be an instrument of healing and reconciliation for ourselves and others, why wouldn't we? Right. You know? Mm-hmm. It's a much better world. Mm-hmm. I remember watching this incredible, I don't know if it's on YouTube or what it was, but... This, this, it was a story, and, and these two people are telling the story. A young man and a woman. They were on a date. He drank too much, and he date raped her. Mm. And now they tell their story of their reconciliation. How he owned it. He got super humble. He um, owned it fully. Because here's the thing. You know, all of our relationships are about, har- we have harmony, and we have disharmony, and then we need to make repairs. If we're going to make repairs, we've got to be super humble. Mm. And it's way better for me to say, to, like to my husband, like, honey, I really missed you. I mean, I missed you emotionally. I wasn't sensitive to you. I wasn't tuned in. I wasn't present. I said, the wrong thing. I bet that was hurtful to you. I'm so sorry. I own that. And if this continues to be a problem, I'm going to get some help for it. Because you don't deserve to be treated that way. Mm. And what do you need from me? How can I help you recover from how hurtful I was? Mm. Man, if we would do that, that's way better than my husband having to come to me and say, Nancy, you were totally insensitive and you were a jerk. Mm. Right? Right. Because then we typically get defensive. But if, if we'll just, like, get humble, you know, mm-hmm. and own our behavior, mm-hmm. man, it's amazing how far that can go. And honestly... I think that can be a piece of the pie for sometimes our own depression. Right. Where do I need to make reconciliation? Mm -hmm. Where do I need to make amends? What guilt and shame am I carrying around like a two by four every day? Mm -hmm. And it's heavy. Mm. And what if I just got humble and honest? Maybe I could lighten my own load. You got to do it to yourself. Right? Yeah. Maybe I could unburden myself from all this guilt and shame I've been carrying around. Yeah. If I went if I attempt in reconciliation as best I can, as humbly as I can. Mm-hmm. You know, it's part of AA, right? The twelve steps. Yeah. Like, okay. Now go make amends. Right. And just be humble and own it. And like it's amazing how that can heal some of the addictive cycle even. Yeah. Because most of the time, people get high, however they do that. There's a million ways to get high, Mm -hmm. right? And then you feel better for a while. And then the guilt and shame start creeping back up. Yeah. So imagine if there were actually some guilt and shame, if we addressed the guilt and shame, we could stop the addictive cycle. Absolutely. 
And instead, we're like, how can I feel better <laughs> right now? You know what yeah, I mean? It's easier. Yeah, it's easier. It's quicker. Mm -hmm. And we love instant gratification. You know. So it's from everything that I'm hearing is that this is a complex issue. It is. And we have to be okay with that. Yeah. And we have to be kind to ourselves in the process of finding out what we need to do yeah. to find healing because it's complex. It's complex. It's not a quick fix. No, it's not. <laughs> so um, what is something to the person that's watching yeah. on TikTok or YouTube? Yeah. Dude in his 20s. Yeah. And he can't find his way out of that hole. Yeah. What are... What is some encouragement and then some practical steps that he can begin this week? Yeah. Well, I think first of all is to have some self-compassion. Just have some compassion on yourself. And then get curious with yourself. Get curious even with your depression. Like, don't be afraid of depression. Almost everybody has some depression at some point in their lives. I mean, we're all human, mm -hmm. right? So we're all going to have bad days, bad weeks, bad years, bad months. It's, it's part of being human. So normalize it. Don't awfulize it. Right? Normalize it. Don't catastrophize it. And then just start maybe asking yourself, huh, I wonder what this, I wonder, I wonder what this depression might be about for me. Yeah. Huh, I wonder why I'm feeling like I don't want to get out of bed today. Huh. Wondering where my motivation went. Mm. I'm wondering, I wonder why I feel like a slug today. And just get curious about it. And if you could sit with yourself for more than two seconds, you know, you might actually find some answers. Mm. Like, oh, I think it might be tied to this. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how about if you, like you, you said you got creative then. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what if I flip this narrative? Oh, it's not that I've let everybody down. It's I really care about how I treat people. Yeah. You know, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe just start even kind of with yourself. Explore. Yeah. Explore yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Get curious mm -hmm. and be kind while you do it. Man, that can take you a long way, my friends. This is, all of this is the... Um, if people are receptive, yeah. this is the cheat code to freedom. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Just open your heart. Yes. Even if it's that much. I know that's scary. <laughs> that's scary as hell for people. But yeah. try to open your heart that much, at least toward yourself. Well, I'm really grateful that this is something that you're excited to talk about. Yeah, I love and talking And it's funny because a lot of people, uh, the, the characters out in the world right now of people who are creators and influencers, uh, they have so many different angles and I haven't heard yours. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard yours out there. Mm -hmm. It's always, um, yeah, you just go to therapy and get on meds yeah. and you're going to get through it. Or it is yeah. uh, depression's not real. Oh. It's you need to get over it. Mm -hmm. And you have given people a breath of fresh air by saying, no, mm -hmm. this is a very complex yeah. topic. Yeah. And you got to learn to be nice to yourself. Yeah. And you 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 hit on a lot of things that people don't talk about. You know, we emasculate mm -hmm. a lot of men and it's we tell terrible. them to step into their manhood when God made you a man. You God are a you. man. You have to learn and that's why it's important you got to go down the exploring yourself route. Yeah, you and do. finding that who you are yeah. and you are a man. Yeah. And this is who you are. And then maybe there was a snake that was in your life mm -hmm. that downloaded these lies into your head that messed up a lot of the way of how you think about yourself. Yeah. So I just want to say that I'm really grateful for you. Mm -hmm. And I, I really believe that this is going to help a lot of people. I, I hope so. I hope at least it opens the door a crack. And that um, if nothing else, that you'll be a little bit kinder to yourself today, men. Okay, well, do you feel good? Yeah. I know, look, I know you're like, you're like, we can talk for 16 hours right now. <laughs> Got no problem doing that. But so, so we're good to call this one. We're good. We feel good. Okay, well, good. Um, guys, we love y'all. Yeah, we do. We love you. And love even you. if you're, for the ladies, if you're watching this, because you're trying to learn more about your husband or your partner or yeah. your, who, your friend, yeah. 
this is all information that I think is absolutely what I call the cheat code to life. Yeah. But like Nancy said, is we have to learn to be receptive yeah, we and do. allow it in. And again, if you're the friend in the situation and you're seeing your friend walk this, be patient with them. Yeah. Be patient. Yeah. Pry a little. Mm -hmm. Don't try to break the door open. No. And no. it's going to be good. So if you have questions, DM us, send us a message. We would love to tackle any topic. I don't think anything's off limits, right? I, you know what? Nothing's off limits here, man. And we actually mean it, though. No. <laughs> I love to talk about anything that people want to talk about. So message us, comment, whatever you would like for us to tackle, because our goal is to talk about the things that are in your brain and in your heart yeah. so that you can actually receive this content. So we love y'all. And until next time, peace. I imagine at one time you were this brilliant little child. As we enter into adulthood, what was brilliant in childhood can actually get in the way of you living the life you want to live. Hello friends, I'm Nancy Houston. I want to help you live a better life. We're all emotional creatures who sometimes think. And so it's so important that we make this journey from our heads into the depths of our hearts. Welcome to The In-Between with Nancy Houston.